Mr. Agnew is first to speak. The indefatigable Mr. Agnew. Chairman, a subject rather dear to my heart, but it, it, I, as I see it from this report, the EU is fully prepared to spend £30 billion, pounds, sorry, euros a year trying to improve the world's weather by reducing greenhouse gases from the European Union. And that is a fabulous amount of money. Meanwhile, it is investing in transport infrastructure of roads and airports. Well, lorries and aeroplanes will use these things, and it's just self-defeating. They will be burning up fuel and putting out CO2 and goodness knows what else. So all of this, actually, you don't have to spend money to tell people to stop farming or to stop travelling. That's the only way you're going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, if you really believe that's going to make any difference, is simply telling people to stop to be active. I'm just looking at something that we were talking about this morning. Um, they're considering in East Germany possibly saying that certain liming materials aren't good enough to be used, which means that lime will have to be transported a thousand miles maybe, uh, two well, kilometres, all that will use transport and fuel. These reuse rules making life more expensive. Uh, then there's the whole attitude to GM crops that could, could reduce the amount of fuel we use. You mentioned forestry in your report. Well, forestry isn't an EU competence. I've said that several times now in the last year, but there's just this creeping assumption that it is. But there is something where we could spend money uh, which is a direct result of what happens with the climate. We get very heavy periods of rainfall from time to time, and due to human activity, we've been concreting over more and more of the countryside, and we've been building in places perhaps where we shouldn't. But human activity has resulted in flooding. It's not as though there's more, flood, more uh, rain than there used to be, but it's moving more quickly over hard surfaces and causing damage. Now, one way of spending this money is to protect the upper part of the catchment area, dams, contour banks. That's a good way of preventing damage from the climate, but I'm, I don't hear that here. Uh, the other thing, of course, is, um, and I think the report more or less mentions it, 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 there is no link between the target to spend £30 billion per year on climate action and any actual impact on greenhouse gas emissions. I mean, how do you prove that this £30 billion is well spent? Thank you, Mr Agnew. And I look to see if anyone else wants the floor. Mr Hoisling. I wouldn't like Mr Agnew to be all on his Todd in the debate. <laughs> it's really extraordinary that the party leaving Europe has so much to say. Um, you know, if, if you, Mr. Agnew, want to, to leave, you can, you can sort of quietly uh, retire uh, discreetly and leave us to sort out our, uh, I don't know, flood defences or, or whatever. Because if you look at the if you look at the actual measures, I do worry about some of the apparent contradictions in how the money is spent. Taking biogas, for example. When you're doing climate relevant uh, calculations, you have to do the sums right because I think some of the calculation in Germany to do with maize crops is misleading. Uh, I think I think we were maybe fooled a few years ago about the huge potential, huge 
energy potential there is in in agriculture and the fact is we're still net importers in Europe we've had the palm oil debate and it's counterproductive to count palm oil as a biofuel so I think we need to take a close look at this and see if it really all adds up because it's all very well to call something climate action but you have to ask yourself whether it is actually doing the climate any good especially when it comes to the second pillar spending. Ms. Ragnew. Letting me come back, Chairman. I, I had to, really, because Martin Housling mentioned me by name and he was saying that why should Mr. Agnew be worried? Because there's going to be Brexit and, and Britain will be leaving. Well, the reason I'm worried is as follows. Because this 30 billion euros per year to improve the world's weather, a lot of that is going to be contributed by British taxpayers. And I'm here to represent them. And so to go back to an old slogan uh, in what's now the United States of America, no taxation without representation.